Hey guys, Dale Walker, working on Mr. Green again. We're going to continue with part two of the stage two tune. The reason this is stage two, it's going to be for any full system. And then what I do with the air box and then install it my tuner and so on. Um, maybe someday I'll get a stock bike in here, completely stock, and uh, with nothing else done tweak it a little bit, but that's not what we're going for. Most people are going to put a pipe on this bike. So anyway, um, let me see. What I was going to do is a little recap. Uh, we'll get started on the video. I'm going to do a little touch up here and show, show you just a few little things. So let me go over my release form. Everything we're doing in these videos is at your own risk and at your own discretion. It's all for closed course. Uh, not be operated on the street. You already know that. Um, these products that we're working on now can't be sold or shipped to California. Okay? So, anyway, let's get started. Hey guys, this is my close course competition sales form. I just wanted you to read this, be clear about this. This has to be, uh, I email it to you. It has to be filled out. And signed and dated. And returned to me, either in a PDF or JPEG. Or you can um, fax it, old school. And you are just acknowledging that Whole Shop Performance products are not going to be used on public roads and everything else that's on this form that violate any federal or state law. Okay, That's all my tuners, any exhaust system, jetting kits, anything to do with smog equipment. Your bike is being used not on the street and you're telling me it's not. Okay, that's it. Okay, what we're going to do is a little touch up with my vacuum cleaner. I have my handy dandy little extension on my small little shop back. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you the best way just to make sure all the little Loctite, little, there's barely still some in there. And uh, what you want to do is grab the shaft and just barely rotate it upward just a little bit. I have a nice scribe with a little hook on it and what we're going to do is hold this right on there and you're just going to kind of poke around in it and have it right on it I can see what I'm doing I'm going to the dentist but it doesn't hurt Barely some on the thread. Trust me, if that that is that would not hurt the engine anyway. <laughs> but um, I might as well do it. Let's turn this shaft a hair more. Okay, next one. This one I can see a little bit in. Yeah, if you look real close now, there's none in there in the thread. Okay, now, there's really none down in there. You can eyeball it. But this is really nice, this little hose. You can buy a little kit with several attachments for your car. It's like for the vents in your dash, it's beautiful. All right. Awesome. Good.
Okay, now I went I went over this before on my uh, uh, when I had the air box up another time um, in one of my videos, but I'll show you. So <clears throat> you want to plug the uh, air injection valve here, so you don't have to remove it and put a resistor on it or anything like that to bypass uh, to cap it off from the air box nipple. Uh, some people put a cap on the air box nipple and then shove this over it. But you know, it swells up the hose, and then if you ever take it off, the hose is going to be stretched out. So, what I like to use is a real nice little uh, rubber plug. And I am going to include this plug that fits the hose properly with my uh, Super Tune Pro Tuner. Okay? So, what I do is I, you just, you can just get a screwdriver and kind of pull on this. The hose is pretty pliable. So, you can get a big screwdriver in there and kind of pull it at the same time, and it will pop off. And then, hang on, I've already put my plug in here. What I normally do is put, just rub some uh, armor all on it. I put it in the hose, use a Phillips head screwdriver, and I shove it in, you know, inch and a half or so. It's already in there. And I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, the plug's in there, blocked off, okay? Nobody even knows you did it, all right? Again, race course only, every part. Good old spit on your finger works just dandy. And you can put the hose right back on. Simple as that. And this is going to go right back to your box just like stock. It doesn't affect this rubber here at all. And that will help uh, the fueling and the lower RPM. Uh, <clears throat> it won't affect the tune that way. And it will help uh, get rid of the D-cell popping. Okay, so because basically that throws the uh, cool air from the air box when you neutral throttle or back off of it, it pulls it in and then dumps it right out the exhaust ports for a cleaner burn. So anyway, that's done. Now come over here real quick. I'm not going to do this in front of you, but I'm going to go over what I'm going to do to the air box. Been uh, thinking about this for a while. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do four equal holes in this area. I'll show you when I'm all done. It's dark. Dark. See it now? Better? Okay. Four equal holes here and here. It's got to be on the filtered side. Okay. And as you can see, the filter is a fairly small filter. This air box really needs more airflow. And, uh, Anyway, the filter's in like this, so anywhere, anywhere from this area forward is your filtration area. You know, you don't want to put holes back here, you won't have any filter. So I'm going to do um, one, two, three, four on each side. I'll tell you what size when I'm done. And then I'm going to poke a couple right in between where the velocity sacks would be. About one here and one here. All right? And then... We're going we're gonna to replace these two inner velocity stacks with two original one and fours. So they'll be all equal length. There's a little tab you'll have to trim off here. I'll show you that when I get done. And this is the part number for the stacks that you need to order. You need two of those stacks for the same part number. 14073-0941. Okay, um, the best place maybe is Ron Ayers, Ron, A-Y-E-R-S dot com, or Rocky Mountain ATV and Motorcycle. Two best places to get those, unless you have a friend at the dealer. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do to the air box is the divider up here, we're going to trim slightly, but I'm not going to mess with the one in the back. Uh, in my opinion, that's not going to do anything. It's behind the velocity stacks here. I'd rather keep the support in the air box, and that's more of a hassle because of the radius to trim it. So this rear one is separated, and no airflow is coming in on this side. So on the front part, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this triangulated piece. Okay, so I'm going to stay back from this support. Is that lighting good? My wife leaves his tape in here. I'm going to stay back from the support just a little bit, leave a little bit still there. 
and then we're just going to trim this here and leave it leave a little hanging down it's not going to do anything um, i can't see any point in making it flush and you know um, grinding or filing or using a tool to buff that off and that way this is still supported real well because i don't think the back does anything personally i'm going to do that so let me do these mods and let me work on this and then i'll show you the air box when i get done and that'll be the next step all right, I'll be back. Hey guys, I thought I'd show you a little tip before I start putting all the holes in the air box. It's not going to be that many. Anyway, we're going to go with uh, three quarter inch holes. I got the thing just clamped down to my little table here. So, come over here, hon. So, the radius and stuff makes it a little difficult to measure. Uh, it just so happens a trusty American Lincoln penny is darn close to three-quarter OD, okay? So what I'm going to do is you can use the penny and you can look straight down on it. And you can get that sucker pretty close on the radius so it looks nice, not over here, here, whatever. And on the rear, it's a shorter run here. We're only putting two per runner here, holes. But, uh... Come down here about a quarter inch from the edge to the top and you can just hold it on there and eyeball it directly straight down and mark it with a sharpie pen. Then you can measure your X and get the center punch as close as you can in the center. And then what I'm doing is leaving approximately a quarter, uh, half inch between each hole. So move your penny down measure across here half inch hold it down snug just kind of do it with a brand new sharpie the best you can measure your X and do your center punch the reason I'm going with three quarter and no larger it's not going to make that much difference to go any larger anyway we're going to add two additional holes underneath I want to stay away from this radius that way if you ever want to reverse this uh, any panel three-quarter inch panel plug, plastic panel plug that pushes in with the little teeth on it will work perfect. Or even a neatly cut strip of black Gorilla tape. There's not a lot of load on it. Even duct tape would do fine. Okay, on the front one here, I want to keep below this little mounting brace. So I did it. This is a quarter inch below the edge. This is about a half inch. See, I got a gap right here. I want to keep that support. I don't want to be in that area close. So there you go. Same thing. Half inch gap. Same thing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you're going to use a step drill bit. This one is only up to three quarter. So you can go one step at a time. But I want to use a brand new eighth inch uh, drill bit for your pilot hole. And that way this thing hopefully gets started, centered, and the hole will be centered. So let me get those drilled and then I'll show you, okay? Be right back. Okay, so no matter what you do in plastic, even if you center punch it, the drill's gonna wander a little bit. You just have to do the best you can. So I've drilled three pilot holes. I'll drill the last pilot hole. And like I say, it still wanders a little. So it's not gonna be perfect. That's why I'd rather keep it a little undersized and not go out to the radius here. Okay, so now, uh, hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, I got a variety of uni bits here. I'm going to use the smallest one first to try to get the hole where it's just stay centered. Maybe go two steps. They do a nice job in this. If you can use one of these, it's, you can use a hole saw, three-quarter hole saw, but these do, a, I think, a cleaner job. So this one maxes out at three-quarter, so we're going to go all the way through. If you have a buddy or something, you can hold a vacuum cleaner on this at the same time, which makes it nice. See, if you look right here, see, it's already off-centered a little bit. It's really hard to control in plastic, even though you center-punched it and I had it dead on. That's the way it goes. See how clean that is? Look at the edge of that hole. Okay. 
That's why you use a three quarter. You just let it let it go through. Wow, looks like I cut my hair. Look on the floor. Except mine's gray now. Okay, so now let's see how that feels. Pretty nice clean edge. Don't really have to do anything. If you have a next size larger, this one goes up to one inch. You could run it in here and just barely hit the edge with the next step. But um, only if it's got a lip. It's fine. Inside you'll have to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so if you look over here, that's pretty nice. You know, you're not into the radius. Uh, you, you're down here, we still got a lot of support in this area and here, nothing's ever going to break. So, anyway, just try to match that on the other side, okay? I'll be back. Okay, you can use the penny trick on the bottom here. This is where we're going to put them. Just two additional holes. It's hard to tell, but I have it pretty centered, just eyeballing it between the two stacks. Okay, it's pretty close. Okay, and then you want this centered from this little plastic and molded to the radius. It's about an inch. So there's center punch. So the center punch is about three eighths of an inch in from both sides to get your uh, cross hatch and get it center punched the best you can anyway. Okay, let's finish drilling these two. Same thing, eighth inch pilot hole. It will wander, just keep it straight, keep equal pressure on it even. Okay, now we're gonna use my smaller step bit just to go a couple, yeah, what's that, that's, I don't know, seven sixteenths, I guess, a couple steps up. But the smaller one, that way you got a better chance of it staying centered. Good. Now you're going to put the, the one in that ends at three quarters so you can let it totally fall through the hole. Make sure it's tight, otherwise it'll chatter and the drill, drill bit of fall out. See, it's already wandered a little bit. See off center? Not a big deal. See, no matter what, that's still tight. You could have a friend hold a vacuum if you have a, if you have any friends. Okay. So here's the finished product. Santa, huh? No lip. Inside's nice and clean. You don't even have to deburr it. This is a nice pliable plastic. And with the step drill bit, it's a lot cleaner than a hole saw. If there is a little anything, just deburr it in there with a little knife or a deburring tool. So you got both sides. Uh, actually, we don't have both sides. Still got to do these two. I'll be damned. <laughs> and these two here. And then these. Got ahead of myself. Okay, I'll finish it now. But anyway, <laughs> that's the finished air box as far as that goes. Next, we'll change the stacks. Can't see now, what can I tell you? <laughs> Peace out. Okay guys, the next step, turn the air box upside down, loosen up the clamp uh, bolt that works both uh, lower velocity stack clamps. Pull that off. I've already removed the inner long stack, one of them. You just do that by collapsing this with both hands, keep pushing and it'll pop out the little groove and it'll pop out. Okay, on the new stack, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to trim these little, we're going to get rid of these little locking tabs here. They're not needed. Once it's in the groove, it's snug. Once the clamps are on, it's not rotating. So we need to, um, these actually right here, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to leave these. Sorry about that. There was two choices here. Um, 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to snip these off with a little pair of diagonal pliers, okay? And just take those and snip them off flush. I lost my camera person. She left me. Anyway, so, um, yeah, get rid of these. And then you can put a little bit of lube in there. You can use uh, anything. Windex, a uh, teeny bit of armor all, whatever you want to use. And do that to both and reinstall those stacks. So let's get that done. Okay, a little tip is I like to collapse the air horn with both hands and shove it through this direction. That way you have a radius that you're going to be pulling through. So get it to this point. Kind of get it yeah, kind of straight. doesn't have to be perfect yet. And then you want to lube this groove up. Just or this radius here, mainly. Okay. And a little bit on this edge here. So it pops through. And then, you know, will center itself in the groove. Okay. Yeah, once you got it to this point, I did have to use a blunt screwdriver. And... Uh, Kind of push up on the on it right in this area here. You won't poke through it. Just be careful. You just got to lube. I use some armor all with my finger on it. I think that's the best thing to do. It's pretty darn stiff. And once you get it to this point, you got to look on the other side. Just make sure, you know, all the way around. It looks just like that. No, not deformed at all. You think you could have it in there? Whoops. Sorry. It's a pain in the ass to see all this. You would think you have it all in there, but then you look way back in there. It could be folded over and still look good on this side. So just check, check both sides. You have to just wiggle it and pull on it and look at it. And uh, do it while you have a little armor all on there. And then, yeah, once you get it, once you get it in there, just kind of eyeball it and get it straight. And then that's going to dry up and it's, going to be nice and straight like that. That's what you want. Fairly straight. Okay. So then yeah, change the other one and then you'll be done with this. Okay. Here we go. Okay guys. The lower air box mod is completed. We got the all the equal stacks in there now. We got them all looking good. They don't have to be perfect but you can kind of wiggle the inside two around. Two and three, get them all straight. Um, there's your two additional holes down here. There's the finished uh, three quarter inch holes here and here. And on the other side, duh. So this puppy here is ready. Okay, and if you got any armor all on the area of the stack here, wipe it all off dry, then put your put your clamps on. Go ahead and leave the bolt back to almost all the way out for now. Okay. They stay on there. That way they'll go right back on the uh, throttle body. So we'll set this aside and then let me get to work on the top cover. This is it. We got four three-quarter inch on the outside. We got two, two here. Lined up with the stacks, center, between the two. Probably doesn't make a damn bit of difference, but I thought, why not? That's a good spot. Okay, I'll be back and show you the cover mod. Okay, guys. I'm getting a bit thrashed now, standing on my broken foot for a few hours. So, But I want to get this part finished, and then this would be the end of uh, part two. So what I've done is I used some... Uh, shears that I've had for a while. They're pretty sharp. Got about halfway down. Then by hand, a little handheld uh, hacksaw blade to do this first part. You could use a little air one if you had a little, you know, jigsaw type. It's no big deal. Anyway, I stayed about a quarter inch away from the lid. So then I put my little trim tape here that I use for painting and left a nice edge there, so I'm about a quarter inch or so. So now what I'm going to use is my super thin uh, cutoff wheel. If you had a Dremel with a little saw blade, you could do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
Anyway, I've got some small little discs that are about an inch and a half instead of two and a quarter. Once I get it in there, then I don't want to go past this. Sorry. Once I get it in there, I don't want to go past, you know, the corner up here that I already have. So let me try to set the camera up. Lisa's gone. I'll put it on a tripod and see if I can cut this and show you me doing it with this thing wiggling around. Okay? Be right back. Okay. Got my face shield on. Let's uh, go for it. is you just got to go for it but take your time make sure you're not cutting anything you don't want to cut that's why I'm staying back a quarter inch the tricky parts this corner in here got to really see what you're doing you don't want to I got to tip this a little to clear this thing here the support in the center. Don't want to hit the air box. If I can help it. I need to adjust my light. Almost there. Just need to neatly try to trim this corner. And then we'll have to clean it up. off and then we can it's melted plastic we'll just kind of peel off I usually use a little knife deburring tool okay look at even your fingernail does a nice job if you have any anyway so that's what that's gonna be let me um, let me clean it up and then I'll show you a picture of it, okay? Okay, a little deburring tool I use on the end of the canister shells when we build mufflers. Hopefully I got that in the right spot, kind of, so just a little bit on the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can't see in here, it just needs to be smooth. You don't want any excess garbage hanging off in there. Okay, and that's pretty darn good right there. Now you could take a little bit of sandpaper uh, if you want to, just to go over the edges by hand. I'd probably just take a little bit of sandpaper and go over that by hand, probably about 180 grit, something like that. So let me do that. Man, I have quite the mess. That means I'm getting stuff done. All right, here it is. Here's my new baby. Looks pretty sand. I still got a little edge on there for support. A little edge on here for support. This is never going to crack. It looks clean. I just got it close and actually used a... I had a roll of brand new uh, emery cloth. And I just did it by hand. Kind of radius the end here real nice. and Cut into the corner the best you can. Make sure you get all the crap out of here. I did it with my fingernail about 50 times. That's exaggerating, probably 10. And uh, blew it out, vacuumed it, and just blew it out. And uh, you can never have it too clean. Okay, but anyway, that looks pretty sano. This is all still in the back, has nothing to do with the velocity stacks, full strength. This would never crack. Okay, 
I think that's the way to go. So there's that. And then going back on this, I already showed you it. Um, I found that you want to roll these till they just barely touch the outer two. And then the, the top goes down easier. I had them evenly spaced straight and it's hard to get the top on. Okay, it still touches here, but so just rotate them till they kiss the outer ones because the outer ones are you didn't change them they're they're locked and that's better for putting the lid on anyway there's the whole shot stage two air box completely done and the top lid okay I'll sign off in a second okay guys that does it for part two that was a lot we got a lot done uh, next, we'll do, be doing the O2 bypass and the installation of my tuner uh, piggybacked into the injector plugs. That'll be part three. And then I'll probably button up the bike and I'll clear the code from being on the dyno. It you know blows the ABS code. I'll show you how I clear the code real easy with the co uh, code reader with an adapter. And uh, we'll get into that next time, but I think right now it's time for, uh, I don't know, uh, Tylenol for one thing for my leg and knee. I think I'll have a maker's mark on ice. So till next time, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Helps me out. Ring the bell. Give me a thumbs up. Catch you later. Take care.